Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Judy Nathans. And I'm still Robert Winters. Yeah, we're still here. Yeah. And it's still August 6th. Uh, 9th. I know, I got <laughs> I you confused. Jumped the week. Yeah. There we go. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, so maybe what we should do here, just to get started for the second half hour, is just for those of you civic doobies who are just dying to go to, to public, go to public meetings, meetings right. uh, in uh, this week here, maybe we'll sort of touch on a few things. Actually, let me actually, just, why don't we just show it and yeah, then we'll, um, show it here and we'll then, sort of talk our way yeah, through it a little bit Yeah, let me just get it better there. There uh, you go. I don't know how if it, oh, this resolves well, reasonably well, but yeah. again, today's August 9th, and tomorrow, for those mm -hmm. who are interested, the Cambridge Bicycle Committee is meeting yeah. tomorrow evening. Where? Uh, fourth floor meeting room, City Hall Annex. Okay. So, yeah, and uh, right nearby. These are all like right around the block for me, so this yeah. is... This this is Very really easy. the That's only why reason. you became what you That's, did. Right? I became Mr. <laughs> Civic Guy purely as a ge yeah. ge geographical right. accident. Right. Right. Uh, also, tomorrow night, 5:30, is the Cambridge Election Commission uh, is meeting. And that is your uh, public meetings, huh? Yeah, I'm oh yeah, public comment. Room. Look at that. And they are talking. You'll notice they are under early voting. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this old business, uh, you know, just talking about policies, whatever. But one of the new business items is. You know, just managing dealing with the early voting for the November election, not for the September primary, right. but for the November election. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's worth noting, I think there was a report in the news recently that yes. of the 300 or some odd cities and towns, many of them actually hadn't really developed plans at all it's yet for early voting. Of them or so? I don't Something know like that. Yeah. Some have partial plans. Cambridge was pretty mm -hmm. much all the way there, but they were waiting for the word, final word from the Gallery, Secretary of State's yeah. office for exactly what should or shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing a little bit here, but I think we'll probably end up with about three locations open for most of the 11 days. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the devil's in the details and we'll right. see. But whatever it is, there'll be more than enough opportunity for people to vote early or on election day, like, uh, like, most, most, like most folks do. Mm. Um, let's see, a few other items here. The, we just had, at the last meeting, there were three city council committee reports dealing with the um, proposed changes to the inclusionary housing requirements that are part of the Cambridge Zoning Ordinance. Um, they are still in the housing committee. Uh, any changes in the ordinance will only take place after it gets referred to the ordinance committee. So I don't know if this is going to be the last of the housing committee uh, meetings on this, but this is coming up on August 15th. Which is what is that next? That's uh, next Monday night. Next Monday. Um, uh, so anyway, that's uh, for those who have been following that particular issue. Mm -hmm. um, again, I, I don't know for sure what will happen here, but I do know from the August 1st meeting that there seems to be a little more perking up of people among the property owners world and the developers world. Uh, with maybe just a little bit of pushback uh, to sort of come up with some a reasonable compromise that'll work well for everybody. Um, next Tuesday, uh, August 16th on the planning board, I won't, I'm not going to hit every little thing here, but mm. I don't have it listed on this calendar, but I just got to notice that I believe uh, one of the items there is going to be taking up one of the new uh, medical marijuana dispensary oh. Uh, zoning petitions, and as we yeah. talked about last week, yeah, this should sense. not be yeah. getting adjudicated by z via zoning. Really? Little one-off zoning petitions every it's time. It's be endless. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I don't let's see what's the now. Oh, yeah, urban agriculture. Yeah, I just realized is urban agriculture bees and chickens, things like that. Things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but it could be just you could grow f food and vegetables. Well, but you can always grow food and vegetables. You could do it, but the thing is, you can't sell it. But the thing is, if you want. Is wanted, that what this is? Aimed I, at? I, I don't remember, but I think uh, that there may be so. some. I don't think so. I think it's just that urban agriculture is things that you don't think of as urban, as bees and yeah. chickens. And yeah, but it, it, there's no real regulation other than yeah. to say don't do it right now. Right. And if people want to do it, then you have to come up with a, some sort right. of regulatory scheme. Citing upkeep and any modification of an activity that addresses public safety. So it doesn't really yeah. have to so do with So that's coming up in a couple yeah. of weeks on the 23rd. So yeah, if you're interested be in and that. And it's going to be televised. So they must think yeah. it's pretty important. Well, you know, yeah. it, it also is a good opportunity for some of the political people to sort of strut their stuff too. Yeah. 
Um, okay. And again, I think that might be a mistake about the Cambridge Redevelopment Authority. I think that may. Uh, oh, be on the twenty fourth. Okay. But later in the month, a couple of uh, neighborhood and long term planning, public facilities, arts and celebration committee. Oh, what a meetings, long title! The first of which is also with the Civic Unity Committee. Yeah. Uh, are ones that are on, on some topics of that are pretty near and dear to my heart. Voter turnout for municipal. Yeah, the election. first one, which is on August twenty fifth, actually uh, mm -hmm. is supposed to be a joint public hearing. It's the discuss. same time as the all time baseball. Uh, yeah, so I might just oh. miss it. Which uh, one? We'll see. Actually, it <laughs> depends on the time of day yeah. here. So if that's it. Yeah, reasonable. it says 6 o'clock. Well, but we'll I might, maybe I'll do there and then run away and yeah, go, to go to the, to the game. game. Games last a lot yeah. longer. Uh, yeah. Right. So anyway, this is, um, this is about, and I, I, yeah, I'll, let me be really clear. Mm. To me, a really stupid idea, which is mm -hmm. uh, a voter reward options. Uh, so everybody Just for what, municipal, which is interesting. Just for municipal it elections. It's more important to have it for yeah, the presidential. I think vote. everybody would love to see higher voter turnout. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, the way you get higher voter turnout is you give people a reason to vote for because right. maybe what's, what they're voting on matters. Right. You don't say, hey, if, yeah. you, you, if you come and vote, uh, we'll give you a ticket and put you in the lottery and you'll win mm -hmm. $2,000 or something. Mm -hmm. To me, that runs awfully close to just downright bribery. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, and basically, you're just trying to draw in disinterested voters just for the you know the possibility of the word mm -hmm. of cash. My understanding is that there are actually some pretty severe legal uh, uh, questions so. yeah. uh, that need to be raised about this one in here. Yeah. And I think it'll be kind of entertaining because I I have a little wind of what some of the re the research on this actually brought out mm -hmm. about the only places where this has really happened were from particular interest groups mm. who were the ones who were offering the rewards right. not the not cities and towns but interest groups who were targeting yeah. particular voters to get particular voters to yeah. come out and offering rewards for it so it's sort of the opposite of penalizing people and fining them for not voting which yeah. is what Australia does which you could argue with but at least that's Right. You I mean, know, mandatory different. voting is at least uniformly uh, yeah, applied. Yeah, I mean, you know, you should do this, and if you don't, you're going to pay. This is, we're going to pay you, and that doesn't feel right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, four days later, on August 29th. Yeah, same was, committee's same doing committee what? Same committee here. And, and I have to say, it's a little strange yeah. that, that these, uh, uh, well, I mean, I know why they are in front of these particular committees, but... These are both matters that should be committee. before the Government Operations Committee. Yeah. Um, but particular chairs of these committees want to have control over the discussion, so they manage mm -hmm. to somehow get it in their committee. Um, so the one on the 29th actually talks about having a public hearing to discuss different models for campaign finance reform and publicly mm -hmm. funded municipal elections. Now, I think that's a Actually, good, that's pretty reasonable, I think, to discuss I think that's that. A, the, I think it's an absolutely reasonable yeah. discussion uh, to have there. I think yeah. that one thing that's about this that I, I think are, and actually, it might be able to just sort yeah. of roll back to what's going out here, just to let you people know mm -hmm. that we're not just disembodied yes. voices, uh, <laughs> is that there are some aspects, and I think I've probably mentioned this on this program before, some... Uh, things about uh, proportional representation elections in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to talk about municipally, you know, about public financing for such municipal elections, uh, because of the transferable votes, there are some rather curious possibilities. Yes. For example, and again, I don't want to be too repetitive on this one, but, uh, you know, if you wanted to, and if you were assured if you could get a minimum amount of money raised privately, then you would be assured of getting some sum of money handed to you out of taxpayer dollars, mm -hmm. um, then there would be every incentive for you to simply recruit, you know, mm -hmm. let's just arbitrarily say 10 candidates to run as a slate, uh, basically have the same people give them each 10 bucks, 75 people give them 10 bucks to raise mm -hmm. $750. I'm just making up the numbers because yeah. I don't know what minimum threshold would be called for. Yeah. And then you would uh, basically say, let's just glom on more and more people onto this gigantic slate here. Mm -hmm. And this way we can raise not just the $2,000, but $20,000 to run our slate. But who then controls how it gets spent? Um, the, the candidates and their slate. So it would be an orchestrated problem. Ah, the more people you add to, yeah. the harder it gets, I think. Because, yeah, so, yeah, so if you're thinking about this as sort of like a mm. three or four candidates running to become mayor of a city and about public financing, well, then there are some pretty good arguments I think you can make. 
But until some of these issues about how this works in a multi-candidate uh, at large election where slates can run and people can basically pool money effectively, mm -hmm. whether officially or unofficially. I'd like to have those questions answered very yeah. much. I'd rather see just the finance reform and forget publicly funded, but more, this is what you can spend, this is a suggested amount, and, uh, yeah, and, I mean, and make it known. You know, and I think we've mentioned yeah. it before, I think yeah. we should just set up a voluntary cap, and if you break right. it, we'll make an ass out of you. Yeah, you know, I think that's really what we need, you. a voluntary cap. Right, yeah. and, I, and the other thing, too, is that there are, I mean, I, I for me, I, I'm not a big fan of municipal, uh, excuse me, not municipal, but um, publicly financed elections. Mm -hmm. Though I, I'm not, I understand the argument for I'm not horribly against yeah. it or anything like that. But what I'm much more interested in is full disclosure. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, uh, there is disclosure for city council candidates. But they, when there are organizations that are backing candidates, and I'm not singling out anyone here, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are designations that basically allow you to not say where your money's coming from at all. Mm -hmm. And if you are basically supporting a slate of candidates and your mm -hmm. money is coming from unknown sources, that completely mm -hmm. defeats the idea of campaign finance reporting. Mm. And personally, I see this as a uh, as a, a method of financing municipal elections. How, how can it's only it be un, How can it be unknown if you have to re? Because the individual can campaigns must report, but if they're getting money from or actually, if you have a, it's sort of like what happens with the, the political ads now, where you know it's like you know citizens for justice. Yeah, but that's because and, of the Supreme Court ruling. I well, thought. this is because of the Supreme Court ruling too. Oh, so they would be taking advantage of yes, something that we yeah. all don't like, but exactly. it works for them. Okay. Exactly. Oh, so, I get you know, it. It's like these. Uh, there, there's something pretty shadowy. Well, what about before that happened? You remember, you go back. I mean, were municipal election? Did you always know who paid for what? Um, yeah, I think, I think it was uh, like, for example, the CCA. Yeah. Uh, they could the the organization. Their board would endorse the candidates. Okay. But then and then the they could raise money for no, that. Oh. The organization could not raise money or spend money on campaigns. Oh. Um, but what they did is they formed a separate uh, uh, CCA election committee, which then oh, yeah. raised well, money independently. Well, sure. Well, that's that. like Planned Parenthood has a lobbying group, and then they have right. you can donate to Planned Parenthood, but they can't endorse. But right. the lobbying arm can. Yeah. And now, it's not tax yeah. deductible. Now, so, I don't remember yeah. what the disclosure requirements huh. were back then. Yeah. Uh, and with you know this is pre-internet, so it wasn't right. so easily True. accessible anyway. Right. Uh, but now in the internet day. Where, where you can access online uh, all the campaign finance report right. stuff for candidates, then I just feel that that ought to be true for organizations as well. I agree. And honestly, I really think that should be true all the way. I mean, regardless of how people feel about Citizens United and constitutional amendments and all of that stuff yeah. here, disclosure should just be the bottom But, it, but isn't that part of what some of the new counselors said about lobbying and that lobbyists should be known yeah. to, wouldn't that go along with that? Yeah, but the thing is, is that it's not not uh, that there's no, nothing's been established to say that's the rule, and um, but I'm just saying if they wanted that kind of thing, then they shouldn't object I, to well, this kind of thing either. Right, but I think that they should really go for uh, disclosure first. Yeah, and public financing maybe a little bit later. And, I agree. And honestly, yeah. for me, for. You know, first off, you also have to decide, well, where's the problem you're trying to solve here? And I, mm -hmm. I'm not so convinced that there's such a problem. Right I think now. there's too much money to run I think there's for too much money office. generally. It's basically, a municipal yeah, it's like a race. Position. It's like a race yeah, to 100. Who can get to 100,000? But you know, the more they pay out. the counselors, and now I know days, there's it much becomes more. Becomes a very desirable position. That's exactly right. It's and too much. It is that's too much. That's my personal opinion. I don't think people should be paid that much, and I don't think they should have aid. No, I, I agree. Know, that kind of money. I agree. And yeah, uh, it, yeah, money corrupts. <laughs> it's a good thing to have, but it does yeah, corrupt. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. All right. Uh, another item, and I don't think we've actually ever brought up on this program, but it's mm -hmm. actually been on my, my list every week yeah, for some time. Yeah, outdoor lighting. Yeah. So the thing is, is it was a, a we petition, on it, but maybe yeah. a little bit, but let's yeah. touch a little bit more on it. Okay. Uh, there was a uh, a petition, a zoning petition, by Charles Teague. Some, gosh, it's probably been three or four years ago really? now. Yeah. Uh, and it didn't actually pass, but basically it did lead to the creation of something called a, 
Outdoor Lighting Task Force. Mm -hmm. And under Chris Basler from Community Development Department, Chris has now actually moved down to, I think, Delaware. Mm. But uh, they issued their final report with some recommendations for a draft ordinance, so it wouldn't be part of zoning, yeah. but to regulate outdoor lighting. Now, it, you know, it's based, I think the original incentive about regulating outdoor lighting had to do with problems of, you know, if you've ever had a neighbor who had a spotlight to shine mm -hmm. right into your living room window or your bedroom window, mm -hmm. so you couldn't sleep unless you put in opaque shades, things like that. Or yeah. let's say you were next to a parking lot with some big bright lights uh, or something else. We've, yeah. I, I live across from the long, the old Longfellow School. And it had lights on all Well, oh, they still do have a, yeah. like a bright light. and it's a security thing. So, you know, we call them sometimes and say, could you put it on a timer and change right. it? Right. So it's, it's, a, it's an actual issue, I yeah. think. Oh, uh, yeah. And people also have like these automatic lights around the houses that a squirrel walks by during the night next to yeah. you and there's a spotlight in your bedroom window. Yeah. Well, I thought so, they should be on the ground, but yeah, you're right. Well, they're actually the motion quite, sensors. Yeah. Right. So there are actually new specs that are part of the proposed the draft ordinance oh. um, that actually lays out some parameters, and this would become mandatory. Hmm. In, in you know, there's like a maybe a three to five year break in period, but it mm -hmm. wouldn't be just for new construction. It would be for old installations hmm. too. So. You know, actually, though, I have a light in the back of my house that would actually have to be changed. Huh. Right? Because it's and too I'm, bright I'm okay or, uh, yeah. Well, I think just because of the style of the light. Okay. Whatever. So they put limits on the number of lumens, the mm. the direction. They have some have to be shielded. They have to, yeah. they shouldn't But again, who's going to enforce this unless it's a big entity that people are going to complain about? Uh, well, I think, as is often the case, it becomes complaint driven. Right. So it, yeah. you know, which, okay. has, which has the unfortunate consequence yes. of pitting sometimes neighbors against the neighbors yes. but chances are those neighbors are already kind of pitted against each other lighting zones right. so we have zones now yeah did we so, have zones before uh i think this was basically to delineate the fact that there are certain zones like central square mm -hmm. middle of a business zone right. where it's not going to disrupt a lot kinds of, of lighting would be perfectly okay but if mm -hmm. you did it in a private little right. quiet little street after midnight it would be a problem yeah. i'm looking at the ordinance that's why i'm yeah. looking down here but yeah so okay. um so anyway th uh, that's w was put out there now, my understanding is that from the right, almost from the very beginning, so the sponsor of the original zoning member was Charles Teague, and he was then appointed to the committee, and he kind of was kind of an unwilling participant, quite hmm. honestly. And as soon as the draft ordinance came out, he pretty much started lighting up all the listservs, saying, well, what a terrible thing is, huh. and if, if this thing passes, then it'll be terrible, and whatever. Uh, I don't know if that's really true. Honestly, right now we have essentially no regulations, right. so this, this is a big pretty improvement. Good. Yeah. I think it's very good. Mm -hmm. um, but now, uh, again, not that I'm looking at the neighborhood listservs as sort of the be-all, end-all mm. of uh, truth. But um, you know, there's a, a matter which I would argue is unrelated, mm -hmm. has to do with a housing development that was built down in East Cambridge uh, over in the North oh, Point the area. Oh, Zinc. Zinc. So it's yeah. these Zinc apartments. Now, up at Where the, exactly is that? I think it's down at the foot of either Water Street or one of the parallel streets. So it's okay. one of those streets which used to sort of dead end into the old railroad yards. Okay. Um, but now, you know, with the Green Line extension, hopefully one day coming yeah. through, um, then it'll be right there by the Green Line. So are there houses around it? Uh, I think not. I think that you're basically looking from a distance across. So that's why I find this kind of curious. Yeah. So the proponents of, uh, well, the, uh, I should say the proponents, the developers, yeah. they have these sort of pretty bright, uh, I think, multicolored LED lighting that they mm -hmm. can change both brightness and color. Okay. You know, so it's a little garish. On top and, uh, of the building? On top of the building. Now, you know, you can like it or hate it. I think. So right, it sort of says, look at me? Is says, that what it's supposed says, to be? It says, look at me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's a real attraction, mm -hmm. uh, and if you actually go down around the, around the emerging seaport district yeah. in Boston and at night, you'll yeah. see that this kind of lighting, maybe right. not as bright, uh, but, it's but all over. this type of lighting is actually all over. It really is. Because what, it's all tall buildings and people are, it's either they're hotels They're trying to say, look or, at me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so right now, I think they've been ordered to shut their, shut their lights yeah, off. Yeah, they're not on. And they're and they're yeah. sort of under appeal. Right. But um, I never got a chance. I have to say, I didn't get a chance to see the lights on the top of zinc no. while they were going because I yeah. don't usually go down through no, there very either. much. Yeah. Um, so all I've seen is some images that have been passed around that mm -hmm. show these really bright lights. 
but I was a little curious and I almost wish they would just say we're going to turn them on full brightness one night just so everybody can see yeah. because the images that I've seen I looked carefully and they you know it's very bright at the top but down mm -hmm. at street level um, it's extraordinarily bright which be leads me to think that yeah. somebody simply adjusted the brightness when they dealt with the photos to maximize you the, think, the So you don't really know, though. I don't know it. That's why I would love for them to allow them to be on one time so I could really look at them. There's no developer photos? Uh, maybe there are, but I was not able okay. to find them. All right. So all I see is the images from, yeah, the, you can do from, anything from the advocates who are trying to stop yeah, it all, right. right? Okay. So I would love to have it just turn it on just once so I can really see for mm -hmm. myself because you mm -hmm. cannot tell from a photo what it actually looks like. You're going to get a lot of people calling you. Th I those know, lights I know, come I know. on the next No, no, you're going to do it. We're going to put well, it on for one hour yeah. on Friday night of whatever week here just so people can actually see what they look like. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, again, some people say, well, we've already seen them. All right, fine, but I did Not everybody, yeah. yeah. But it's interesting because I don't think this draft ordinance was ever meant to address something like um, architectural lighting on the top of buildings that are not. Well, I don't know. I haven't, have you read through the whole thing? I really don't know. Yeah, I don't. I did read through it, and uh, and I don't think it really addresses that so much. Yeah, and people light, say, trespass, sky glow, energy. I don't know. It, yeah, it could be covered in it. It could I mean, be. It could I think be. it's a matter of interpretation. Yeah. Uh, and maybe maybe that should be amended, modified a little bit to include things like this. But mm -hmm. but you know, at some point you said after pretty to draw technical. A line and pretty you have technical. To say, were you trying to stop yeah. the problem of lights shining in your your b yeah. bedroom window? Yeah. Or were you trying to protest right. architectural lighting that you don't like based on aesthetic grounds, right? And that's a different matter, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not taking sides here. I'm just saying here yeah. that I would love to actually see what these things look like myself right. to it really know what's happening. Kendall Square, but I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's all in there, but I just, I haven't, it's just yeah. so technical. I haven't read it. Yeah. So anyway, uh, no, no need to sort of dwell on that yeah. so much more just here. Just turn on the lights so he can see, right? Yeah, just, just <laughs> let's, let's, let's have a one, one last blast, and, yeah. uh, and then I'll, I'll either agree or disagree with things. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's probably worth mentioning, at least now that we're into, let's see, so today's the 8th of August. Nice. So now 9th of August. <laughs> All right, so it's exactly one month minus a day from the primary. Right. Oh, September 8th, right? Uh, yeah, right. Thursday. Well, not minus. Oh, it's yeah. a Thursday, not yeah. a Tuesday? Yeah, I just sort of remind oh, people. Oh, because there was a holiday. There's a strange yeah. little feature here that that is coming yeah. up. So, again, it's, uh, you know, most of the seats for the state rep and state senate seats are unopposed. But this, but this is the Jalen and Chung. Yeah, the only ones of uh, the the two consequential ones are yeah. Jalen Chung for state senate, right, and then Tumi Connolly for oh, state right. rep. And I think we've mentioned in the past that the videos which we recorded here They're at CCTV, on CCTV or, right? you can see them on CCTV. Yeah. I have links off of my website as well, right. Uh, and so you might want to just sort of check it out to contrast, mm -hmm. uh, compare and contrast, as they say. Uh, the candidates here. Yeah. There is uh, one other challenge one, which is Marjorie Decker has uh, oh. Leslie Phillips as a challenger, oh, right. yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but that's not really a competitive election mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, to speak of. What about so, Jay Livingstone? No. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I don't know too much, but Jay Livingstone, which is the 8th Suffolk uh, is District House Rep, there is somebody named He's, Keith Anderson, yeah. uh, lives on Whitney, I believe, Okay. Uh, is a challenger, but I haven't heard anything from him, so it might just be one of those cases where somebody mm -hmm. simply has their name on the ballot. Uh, so my prediction is that these are going to be very low voter turnout yeah. uh, primaries, mm -hmm. not only because most of the races School are not competitive. School started that week. It's School just, starting yeah. that week. Yeah. Uh, it's a strange day of the week. Yeah, it's a strange uh, day. And most yeah. of them, they have, there are no challenges. Right. The only exceptions will be in the state senate district with Jalen Chung. Mm -hmm. and, and they'll probably get their base or whatever their base right. is. Right, and then it'll basically be an election r driven by which of the candidates have the better election day machine to get their people exactly. out. Exactly. Right. So it's not going to be about representativeness no. of elections, which is what elections are supposed to be about. No, it's going to be it's about, going to be about get who's out got the, the best uh, election day um, good thing we're not giving them ground money, operation. Right, because there's, there's a good case for not wanting yeah. to pay voters. <laughs> right, exactly. Whoa, all right. Yeah. So I imagine you'll yeah. see a, a real uptick in the turnout in the, yeah. uh, in the uh, which is the one with Toomey, it's the 26 Middlesex, Toomey Connolly. More so than Jalen. Yeah, the signs are definitely sprouting oh, up are they? around okay. town. Yeah, oh yeah. 
um, you know, and then uh, out in, in the state senate district in the western part of, of the city. But I think for the other ones, it's probably going to be an abysmally low voter turnout. It's I guess be I'll go. Nothing of interest. But I, the only one I'll vote, I guess, is Livingston, right? Yeah, I yeah. May not go. I yeah, don't know. and that's not. I don't think that's going to be especially competitive. No. That's at least my sense of things. Yeah. So meanwhile, I, I guess we have a, a couple minutes left just I to talk. I want to bring up trees because Let's talk about I've trees. never really been that attentive to the whole issue, but I, since I went and listened to the thing last week, and and I've been noticing there's trees that really are thirsty. Yes. <laughs> so, and you said there's a way you can alert the city. I mean, you can if you can do yeah. it yourself, that's the best. But if or you're not, maybe we'll get a lot of rain. But uh, the thing yeah. is, is that there is you can use the C Click Fix or Commonwealth Connect. And how do you, do you get that through the city? You can get it through the city. It's actually webpage? right on the city webpage. Is a way it to is. connect okay. to it. Uh, you might want to go that route. All right, but I'll do that. The thing is, is that you way. don't if you if you can actually just take go to care the, some of the, these. Yeah. Yeah. So if you know. The city isn't the be all end all, and they can only yeah. do so much. It's not like they have an unlimited labor force. Right. So there are a lot of people who are actually doing, they're sort of taking custodial care of some of the local yeah, trees. Yeah, I will, right. But like I said, I was walking by an establishment, and, and it was the closest thing was a commercial. I mean, I don't know. And they had big pots in front of their yeah. place. So. Well, if you're I, a business and there's a tree in front, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't wait for the city to do it. Yeah. Just go do it. This were the new trees. But then yeah. I also noticed, like we said, the trees that are grown, but they're still within that two, three the, year period. The young trees, the relatively and newly planted trees well, in their them. first two to three years yeah. are the ones that are most desperately in need of a little extra loving care. Yeah. Um, so but if you got a chance those to do it. trees. And if you have a hose nearby or one of those right. buckets, just do and, it. And, and I'm not to sound too Malthusian here, but the Malthusian. truth is, is that, uh, you know, I don't think the, I know what that the fact is, is that nature also kills off trees as part of the natural cycle. So I know. it's hard to point out that there are some older trees who are not survivors. But would you not, not feed a child that's already born? You should, <laughs> right? But I'm just saying is that we don't have droughts I, every year. Oh, I know that. Will, well, don't water your grass. I went by someplace right near that tree, and they had their sprinkler going for their green lawn, and yeah. I said, "Really? Yep. That's yep. we should have a ban on that." Uh, yeah. When it gets to a point of emergency, they do yeah, enact bans. They do. I mean, it's out in the suburbs, but yet. we haven't reached that. Okay. So let's hope that our, our reservoirs get, are going to be well, flush yeah. with water by the but, end of the year. But please be but conservative of your water. Take care, take care, of, take of, those care of the trees. trees. Yeah, yeah. All right. You know, no, I take I, care of the one around the, in the little park yeah, around my house. Yeah, I, I take care of one that's near me. Well, so. Someone else does, too. But I won't be here next week, so I don't know what so, you're planning. Yeah, but we'll, well, we'll try to let Anybody the out there listening, a few right. people, if you, you want to join come on, Robert. Come on. We'll and he likes give, you. Give you a seat. Right. There we yeah. go. So, anyway, <laughs> until next week, this has been another exciting edition of Cambridge Inside Out. <laughs>